On 60s and 70s vehicles, there are a lot of different valves you find in a brake system. Today we're going to talk about the names of those different valves, what they do, and when you might find them on vehicles. The first valve we're going to talk about is called a distribution block. What a distribution block does is just give you a place to route all of your brake lines. It doesn't actually proportion any fluid or change the pressures throughout the vehicle at all. Uh, it's just a block uh, found on all drum brake vehicles to give you a place to separate your lines and route, route fluid throughout the vehicle. The one function built into a 67 and up distribution block is the brake warning light. If you either lose pressure in the front or rear of the vehicle, a little shuttle moves inside the valve to turn a light on in, up on your dash so that you know that you have an issue. <clears throat> As I mentioned, all drum brake cars from 67 to 70, on GM anyways, had a distribution block. If it's a drum brake car, this is the only block you'd find in most cases. Uh, just a place to, to route all your lines, but not actually doing any proportioning. On a 67 to 70 GM midsize car with disc brakes, you would actually find this same exact distribution block, but it also had two separate valves. The first one is called a metering block. This metering block on GM cars mounted up next to the master cylinder. On Mopar cars, it is usually down next to the distribution block on the frame. A metering block at very low pressures holds off pressure to your front discs so that your rear shoes have a little bit of time to expand. What that's going to do is give you more level stopping at low pressures so that you're not kind of nose diving because disc brakes that you have in the front actually engage a little faster than the rear shoes will. So that's a metering block. The next one is a proportioning valve. This is a GM proportioning valve that mounts in line to the rear. Uh, found on disc brake cars and, and what it does is uh, under heavy braking conditions starts to restrict the amount of pressure going to your rear brakes. What that'll do is keep your rear drums from locking up under heavy conditions and allow you to get adequate pressure to the front brakes before that rear end locks up and starts making you lose control. Starting in 1971, uh, on GM midsize cars with disc brakes, General Motors changed what's called a combination valve. On Mopar cars, 73 was the first year for the combination valve. And what that does is takes these three valves that we've already talked about. The distribution block, the metering block, and the proportioning valve, and combines them all into one. It's a simpler setup and, uh, and is really the style of valve that's still being used today, all in one piece. Uh, this rear port right here on this particular valve, this is a 71 through 77 valve for GM cars, is the proportioning function. It's built right into this rear port to feed the rear brakes. Um, it acts as a distribution block that routes everything throughout your car. And this little rubber cap you see on a lot of valves is, is covering up the, the metering function that's actually screwed into the front of the valve. So these three valves starting in 71 on GM, 73 on Mopar, all combined into what we call a combination valve. Another valve that you see in a lot of aftermarket applications is an adjustable proportioning valve. This, like a normal proportioning valve uh, from the factory, would mount in line to your rear brakes. And it'll restrict the amount of pressure, again, to the rear brakes to keep them from locking up before your front, front brakes will. Uh, it has a little knob on it so that you can adjust the, the amount of restriction of pressure to the rear brakes right there on top. If you have any questions about the valves that we carry here, give us a call anytime, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, every day of the week, 614-557-3442. Thank you.